goodness called her good friend to ask her what else she can do. Hi, girlfriend. So presently, Fred wants to move in in my house to stay for one week. What? For one week. So, from two weeks to one week now. Why are you being so dull, girl? It's what they fear. I hope you're active with the cameras you installed. You need to be very smart. Don't ever let him know you are suspecting him more. Don't panic. We need to catch him red-handed. And lastly, before I forget, the CCTV guy also connected me. So, I am seeing you right now wearing your beautiful clothes. Hello? <laughs> okay. Yeah, he informed me. I have also informed the police. So, let us be active. Okay, dear. Thank you so much. The next morning, Fred was the one who woke goodness up from sleep. He came so early with his luggages. Goodness opened the door and was shocked to see him so early in the morning. Hi, babe. You're welcome. But, babe, all these luggages and box, they are for what? You're just spending just one week? Yes. Yes. You know I'm a fashion guy, so I came with varieties of my clothes. Do you have a problem with it? Oh, me? No, I don't. You are welcome. Let me help you carry your box to our room. Meanwhile, that yesterday, goodness arranged how to drop Mabel to school and also pick her up from school herself. So that morning, after Fred bashed in, she immediately went to Mabel's room and told her to get dressed for school. Later, she dropped Mabel to school and hurried to pick her up from school. As they come back home, few minutes later, Fred arrived. Goodness, he screamed her name. Goodness, what is going on here? What happened, Fred? Why are you angry and screaming? What is the problem? Why did you go to Mabel's school? My own daughter's school. And tell them that I will no longer pick up Mabel. For what? I went to her school to pick her up and I was informed I can no longer pick Mabel up from school. So, you asked the teacher not to permit me from picking her up. Why on earth would you do that? Babe, calm down. It was actually the school, not me. So, a student got missing after someone that the parents entrusted to be picking the student up. The person picked the boy up yesterday and the boy never made it home. Up till now, the boy is still missing. So, the school principal informed all the parents and the WhatsApp group chat to come and pick up their children themselves. And you know I am the one who registered Mabel in school. Some teachers, they already know I'm a single mom. I was asked to remove your name as someone that can pick up Mabel. I had to do it, Fred. It is not my fault. Hmm. Goodness. Are you sure? Yes, babe. It's not my fault. Okay. If you say so, there is no problem. How was work today? It was fine, but very stressful, compiled with the fact that I wanted to pick up Mabel from school. So I left work on time. But when I got to the school, I was hearing all these stories. But it's fine. Thank you so much, Fred. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all you do. That night, as they all slept, goodness couldn't sleep. She was so worried. She was awake. 
she was so troubled and she was walking around her room her eyes sighted those bag and big box that fred came with to her house as she stood there standing looking at the box she was really tempted and pushed to open the box to actually know what is inside the box then she then sneaked and opened the box and to goodness surprise it was an empty box uh -uh. empty box for what exactly fred what on earth are you planning ah i need to inframe my friend though goodness sneaked back to her bed and slept back at obioma's house as she was about to sign the document her phone rang and it distracted her from signing those documents she then told her father to hold on to the document let her answer the call it is a very important call she picked the call and it was Nnamdi's number. But someone else was on the call. It was Oninyechi that was speaking. Hello, Auntie Obioma. This is Oninyechi, Nnamdi's first wife. Uh -uh. Nnamdi's first wife, you see? You sound like a child. Are you Nnamdi's child that I did not know? Who are you? If you want to know who I am, come to Nnamdi's house right now. But it is late. It's dark already. And so, don't you love him again? I thought you said you love him so much. Yes, I love Nnamdi. So what are you talking about? Then, auntie, if you love Nnamdi, Come to his house to find out who is talking to you. After all, I am not sure you have met me before. Obioma became angry. Wait, has Namdi been lying to me all this while? Does he have a child and I don't know? Obioma, unsure of what to do, decided to go visit Oninyechi. I really need to be in that house. Obioma called the driver to drop her off immediately to Nnamdi's house. But Obioma's stepfather was worried. What is going on, Obioma? Why are you in a hurry? And why are you looking so scared and tensed? Papa, please. I have somewhere very important to be right now. Obioma let you leave the house by this time of the night it is very late and whereas we have an important discussion going on here papa someone just called me and it was Namdi, my boyfriend's phone number that the person used to call me when i picked up it was a little girl's voice that i heard and she called my boyfriend her father. Uh -uh. What is going on? I need to find out what is really, really going on. See, Papa, if I don't find out what is going on, I won't be myself this night. I won't even sleep. So please, let me go. I will go with the driver. So don't worry, I will be safe. But Obioma's stepfather told her to take Masi along. Obioma angrily declined. No, Papa, I don't want Masi or anybody to follow me. But Obioma's stepfather started to manipulate her just because he needed to know every movement Obioma made. But Obioma declined. Stop it, Papa. I said I am not interested in Masi following me. I don't need that your love and care right now. I need to leave. Masi, don't need to be following me everywhere I go. She can stay at home today. 
I am leaving. Abioma hurriedly left with the driver. When she got to Nnamdi's house, Oninyachi opened the door for her. Hi, Miss Obioma. I was the one that called you. And who are you, little one? Oh, Miss Obioma, you are evil angry. Are you coming to fight me? <laughs> My name is Oninyachi. I think I have introduced myself before. I was the one who called you, Miss Obioma. So, you really love our husband, hmm? Huh? This is interesting. Come in and have a seat. Obioma, actually, this is the first time of her seeing Oninyechi. And the way Oninyechi was behaving shocked her. So, little Oninyechi, why did you call me? Hello, ma'am. I am not little Oninyechi. You don't need to refer me as little. You can call me by my name, Oninyechi. That is my name. And it's just fine to address me by that. So, what can I get for you before we discuss? We have water, we have juice, we have wine. Name what you want, please. I think water will be fine. Just fine. Okay, I will be right back with your water. Oninyati enter the kitchen and get some water for Obioma. So, Miss Obioma, I actually don't know where and how to start. I think you should start from telling me who you are and where is my Namdi. Hmm, your Namdi is already sleeping in his room like a baby. I am the one that called you here because I want to talk to you. You were about to sign away your life. Ah, Obioma Akona. What are you talking about? You know, I wanted to ignore you, but I see the way your Nnamdi loves you so much. And because I love your Nnamdi so much too, I decided to help. So, your real surname is Akona. That is your real father's name. I know this might sound surprising or strange, but that man in your house is not your real father. And he doesn't love you. The document you were about to sign is not a landed property. It is actually your inheritance from your real father that is what you were about to give away like a free bread to him i think this little information is already turning your head miss obioma i will stop here but i will need to warn you no matter what do not sign anything given to you by your stepfather and for your information, I just saved you. If you want the truth, go and ask your mother some questions. If I were you, ask her those questions privately. Don't do it in your house so that your stepfather doesn't suspect you. If he does, you are in big trouble. You better be a very good girl that you wear to your father, the Madame Goody Goody. Continue being the good girl he raised, but don't ever let him know you found out about this information that I just gave to you. Who are you really? You know, I've been sitting here looking at you and you have been grabbing all this rubbish and I'm confused at the core. If you are a child or an adult who gave you so much information on Inyechi, everything you are saying here, I don't even know about it. And you speak with so much confidence. And on top of that, the annoying part of it 
is that you are smiling on top. Who told you that my real father's name is Akona? Why did you say that the man in my house is evil? In fact, I'm as confused as any human being can be right now. What the hell are you, this little girl? Miss Obioma, let us call it a day. You can find out who I am from your Nnamdi. Good night. I have school tomorrow. And I need to be at that school on time. All you have to do is to go home, collect that document property, and tear it into pieces. Tell him the whole story in this world. Nobody will beat you. And you need to leave. It is late. Up your master. She was so shocked. Ha! Huh. What on earth is going on this night? What the freak? Who is this little girl, man? She left and went home. When she got home, her stepfather was sitting in the sitting room. Papa, why are you still awake by this time of the night? It's late. And you don't normally stay awake by this time. I hope all is well, Papa. All is well, Obioma. It is you I am worried about. Why did you live with so much anger? Why did you talk to me in such a manner? What happened? What is wrong? I am so sorry, Papa. I am so, so sorry for the way I yelled and shouted at you. I am so sorry. What happened? What is wrong? Did you see who you wanted to see? Just then, Obioma was tempted to ask her stepfather if he is actually her real father. But she remembered what Oninechi told her. She closed her mouth immediately. Papa, it was actually a childish call. Don't bother yourself. It is late. Go to bed. Tomorrow we can talk. No, 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 Obioma. I am awake already. Just come and sign the land document, okay? Oh, Papa, that is even true. I was actually signing a document before I left. Please, give it to me. I will sign them in my room and give it back to you in the morning. Hope your master stepfather cunningly removed a piece of paper from that document and gave her the remaining. Obioma left to her room. Obioma's stepfather angrily entered his room and met his wife still awake. I think this your daughter is becoming so smart. What happened, my husband? Obioma is acting so strangely these days. I pray and hope she signs that fake land document so that we will get the real signature. It is long overdue. Don't worry, my husband. My ex-husband's blood runs through her. She will never surrender like that without a force. We need to push her. The faster we push, the better for us. At least, our own children need an inheritance too. Hope your ma not just stick everything to herself. Even you, her own mother, you have nothing to your name. Have you ever wondered why your husband changed all his property to his daughter's name when you two were together? You see, you see the reason why I told you to get rid of that pregnancy. If not, we will not be having this issue. The whole inheritance should have been yours. But you know, my husband, I can't abort a baby that is over six months old. It's risky. And the doctors warned against it. So, it is not my fault. See, there is no need apportioning blame to anyone right now. We need to wait. We have to be very patient so that things will fall in place. 
this is our secret no one actually knows about it so don't worry okay if you say so meanwhile when obioma got to her room she read the document and it was truly a land document she became confused i thought oninichi said what i am about to sign is actually my inheritance but she remembered oninichi's words don't ever sign any document in that house no matter what obioma thought of what to do so that it would seem as if she refused to sign the document she thought of a plan and she decided to wet the document she wet the document with water so that it will not look good for anybody to sign on it again back at goodness house after she discovered that the box Fred came with is actually an empty box she became more suspicious the next morning she woke up on time and went to mabel's room to wake her up asked her to dress up for school immediately so that she can drop her before leaving for work when mabel was done and goodness is set to drop her off to school fred interrupted them he told goodness he will be at home that he won't be going out that day goodness didn't argue or disagree with him no problem my love there is no problem i will go and drop mabel to school now she left after dropping mabel she went straight to her school when she got to her school she turned on the camera and was watching fred from her phone he was making a lot of calls cleaning the whole house afterwards fred bought out a long knife and sharp objects for that matter this shocked goodness she knew that whatever fred had been planning he would definitely execute it that night those sharp objects was of different sizes and he was hiding them inside the box goodness was so shocked she hurried out of the school immediately went to mabel's school and picked her up later in the evening she went home fred welcomed her and asked her about mabel she told him that mabel would be back shortly she stopped by to buy biscuits at the store on the street fred didn't think twice he welcomed her and was so caring towards goodness goodness was actually freaking out the fear was actually noticeable she couldn't even hide it when fred noticed he asked her if she's fine yes i am fine i am just having issues at work that is all hmm sorry about that my love you know i don't like that your work i have told you to wait i will pay you monthly salary times two of what they are paying you but you refused you love teaching you love teaching see i am hungry so i ordered food for everyone i don't want you to come back looking this tired and still enter the kitchen to cook for me oh thank you so much my love thank you so much few hours later by evening the food arrived fred took some to mabel's room when he entered mabel's room he found out that mabel was already lying down sleeping on the bed he wanted to wake her up but goodness immediately stopped him babe don't disturb me bell she's so tired but she hasn't eaten this is her food 
Yes, she has. Today is their sports day in school and she was so tired. When I went to pick her up, I had to buy her food and also some snacks. She had eaten. Don't worry. I will put her food in the microwave later. Tomorrow she will eat it. Fred was so disappointed but had no choice. He accepted and left Mabel's room. In the middle of the night, he tapped goodness so hard, but goodness pretended to be asleep. He then smiled. Wow, this food actually worked. He then carried those box to Mabel's room. He was so happy. He tapped Mabel. Mabel, Mabel, my sweetheart, daddy is here. Come and give me some sugar. Look. I have some toys with me. And the toy Fred was actually talking about is those sharp objects. He then threatened Mabel. If you refuse to give it to me, I will use these toys on you. And I know you wouldn't want to experience pain, my dear. As Fred was talking, Mabel didn't move. He then came closer and grabbed her, pinned her on the bed. Just when he wanted to remove his trouser, he noticed it wasn't Mabel that was lying down on the bed. The person kicked him so hard and he fell. It was a fellow man like him and the person is actually a police officer in disguise. He beat Fred mercilessly before he even called for help. So, Mr. Man, what were you about to do to that young girl? You better speak up or else I will report you to the police. Please, please forgive me. It's just that I, I love young girls. And I, I, I always take advantage of them. And afterwards, I will kill them and put them in the box and trash it in the river nearby. Eh? You say, waiting. Ah, God. Continue. I, I will first make them like me and trust me. So, it means... You don't even like the mother of this young girl in the first place. N no, the target is always the daughter. So, how many victims have you raped and killed? Ah, I've not, I've not done anything like that though. This is my first time. Hey, you better talk. See, this thing on my hand is a real gun. If you do not talk. Just the way you wanted to rape and kill that girl. I will kill you here and pack you inside this box myself. Okay, okay. It's just four girls, so only four girls. So, four young girls died in your hands. And you are here calling it just four. You're a madman. You're a very wicked man. Yes, I'm mad though. I need help, even if it's therapy. I am ready. Fred started to act like a madman immediately. He started to behave like someone that lost his mental balance. But the police officer was not fooled. If you were conscious when you did all you did, you will definitely be conscious when you are going to pay for it. Stop faking as if you're a madman. I know you are not. Then, the police officer opened the door for goodness to come in. She actually overheard everything. Thank God I was smart. Do you think Mabel has been sleeping in this house for a while now? No, she hasn't. She has not been sleeping here. She sleeps in my friend's house early in the morning. My friend will bring her here to get ready for school so that you won't suspect anything. 
Oh, there are CCTV everywhere in this house. I see what you do every day. Don't be surprised, Fred. I was the one that removed your secret camera that you put in my house, in my own daughter's bathroom. You pervert. Goodness slapped him so hard. See, slapping you is not even enough. I will make sure you will get a death sentence by hanging, if possible. You are a very wicked man. The police officer had to hold goodness and stop her from further beating Fred. Then, his team came inside and took Fred away to the police station. The next morning, at Oninyoshi's house, Nam did notice that someone called Obioma with his phone. He asked Ndidi if he knows who used his phone yesterday night after he slept. But Ndidi said no, that she doesn't know and don't even know who did. Namdi called Oninyechi and asked her if she used his phone yesterday to call someone. Oninyechi, did you use my phone to call someone? My call credit has been exhausted. Uncle, good morning, no. Is that not what you are supposed to do first? Eh? Ah, madam of the house, I am so sorry. Good morning, ma. Now, answer me. Did you use my phone to make a call yesterday? Well, uncle, yes, I did. You called Obioma so late at night. For what? Well, I just decided to help your life since you don't have the boldness to tell her. Tell her what exactly, Oninichi. I don't even know the whole story. So what am I supposed to tell her? You are supposed to tell her the information you had, Uncle. That information is enough. But regardless, I love you so much. So I decided to help you save her. She was about to sign her life away sign her life away yes uncle the evil stepfather gave her a fake document to sign so i called her here so i can save her you see i deserve some accolade right wait to oh you mean obioma came here yesterday night and you didn't even think to wake me up so you don't know it is the appropriate thing to do, eh? Oninyechi, hmm. wake you up, Ke. For what, uncle? So that you will come and distract her from the information I was passing to her. Please, uncle, it is not the right thing to do. Simple. Go get ready for work. Or you don't want to go to the beku today. Can't you see? I'm already dressed up for school. Yes, ma. Yes, auntie. I will go and get ready for the bakery. But don't try such nonsense again. Don't ever use my phone to make a call without letting me know. Back at Obioma's house, she was woken up by her stepfather that morning. Hi, Papa. Good morning. I hope all is well. What are you doing in my room this early morning? Good morning, my dear. I just came to check up on you. How are you feeling this morning? I'm doing well, Papa. You didn't tell me what really happened yesterday night. I was so worried. Or do you want to start hiding information from your father now? He used to be open. You tell me your fears and everything happening in your life. What changed, Obioma? You even yelled at me for asking Mercy to follow you. Oh, Papa, it's not like that, please. I am so sorry for reacting the way I did. 
I didn't mean to. I was just angry after I received a call from a little girl. I went to Unamdi's house to discover it was just a prank. A prank call from a child playing around with my boyfriend's phone. But who was that child? I don't even know, Papa. I will still have to go to the bakery this morning to ask Nnamdi some questions regarding the small girl. Hmm, Obioma. I hope this little girl is not your boyfriend's child and he lied to you that he's a single man. You see, these men of these days, they are not to be trusted, my child. You need to be very careful, though. If you need my help, you know how to connect with me immediately. Thank you, Papa. I know. I will find out everything today. Don't worry about anything. So, Opioma, what about the land document? Did you sign it yesterday? Ah, I am so sorry, Papa. Because I was so down yesterday after I collected the document from you. I came inside my room, I dropped the document on the table, and I slept off. But when I eventually woke up in the middle of the night, I wanted to sign the document. That was when I saw that the water I kept on the table actually damaged and destroyed the document. It got turned as I was, as I was about to clean it up. I am so sorry, Papa. I was waiting for the document to dry up. Then I can sign it. But I think the thing that is actually written on it is messed up already. You stupid girl. Are you a baby? Why on earth would you let water touch an important document like that? A landed property I bought for you. I am sorry, Papa. But why are you reacting so badly, Papa? It's just a document. It can be replaced, can't it? Oh, Bioma's stepfather stared at her angrily and left. The shouting attracted Obioma's mother to the room. Why on earth did you make your father so angry like this? You should have been more careful. I am so sorry, mom. But I'm not a child that papa had to react and shout at me like that. Wait, this girl, you're even being defensive. When did that one start? Mama, please, forget about Papa and the tantrum that he's blowing. I need to talk to you. It's a very important discussion I need to discuss with you. I will come by the office. Or Bioma's mother did not even let her to finish. Immediately she heard, come by the office. She fled up. Why? Why? Why do you want to come to the office? For what? But Mama, I have a very important discussion. See, Obioma, no matter the discussion that you are having, no will, no way. You are not coming to my office. Why, Mama? Why? It's always about you. I like your motherly love. You always walk, walk, walk. Ever since I was little, you literally don't give me attention. It was only Papa that is always there anytime I need someone to talk to. Why, Mama? Why the distance? I need to talk to you privately, outside this house. Listen, Obioma, anything you have to say or anything you have to do, I use God beg you, don't come to my office. Don't ever try it. Obioma was shocked at her mother's reaction when she said she wants to come to her office. So, Mama, when can I meet you? And where can I meet you? Since your office is forbidden from me. I will call you during my lunch break. 
and tell you where to come and meet me, okay? Now, go and apologize to your father. He is very angry. Why, mama? I actually want to know why you don't want me to come to your office. See, that is a business environment. And I don't allow any of my children to come there. You are not the only one that is prevented. Your siblings too are not allowed to come there. Back at Nnamdi's house, when Nidi came back from work that day, she saw Onyechi standing at the window, looking so angry. For the first time in Nidi's life, she saw Onyechi looking angry. Onyechi, why are you looking angry, my dear? What is the matter? Mama, this lady that is our neighbor, She's your friend, right? Because I used to see her come here almost every evening after work. Oh, Lizzie. Yes, she's my good friend and neighbor. What is the problem this time, madam? I will use some offensive words. And don't get offended, mama. She is so stupid. Oninyechi, what, mama? She is so stupid. In fact, she is senseless. Why on earth would she allow her sister, her own blood sister, that doesn't like her? She knows though, it's not as if she does not know. So come stay in her matrimonial home. Ha! Oninyechi, is that why you are angry? No, mama. I am not angry. I am just frowning. Can't you differentiate it? Hey! Who told me to give birth to my ancestors? Hey! What did Oninechi know about the neighbor? And will Obioma found out the truth about her real father? Hey guys! Like, get ready! You don't want to miss out on the next episode. It's going to be action to action. Kindly share with your friends and family. And support me if you enjoy all my stories by buying me a coffee the link is on the description like and subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss on the next part of this story goodbye and god bless you